All right, Sunday statements for week nine. Miles, what do you got? Yeah, look up that Jerry Burns thing on YouTube. All right, my first Sunday statement is going to just be Dicker the Kicker, and I'm using this because we need to talk about how the Chargers and Falcons are basically just the same franchise on opposite ends <laughs> of the country. And, like, because they both tried to give this game away so badly. I mean, when Austin Eckler fumbles on a play where you're just trying to run it, you're kind of trying to run out the clock, get Atlanta to use all the timeouts that they need to do, da 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 and he fumbles the ball, and then a defensive lineman picks picks it up and then he's running down the field and then he also fumbles it and then the Chargers pick it back up. I mean, this is insanity. These two are the same franchise. It's like the Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other. So yeah, good, good job, Dicker the Kicker for coming through on a 37 yard field goal. But my God, these two teams are just absolutely the same. You know, this is supposed to be a positive segment, Miles. You, you've been hanging around me way too much. I'll, I'll take it the other way, but I agree with you. My my phrase for the Chargers, to quote the late, great Gilda Radner's Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, it's always something, and it feels the same way with the Falcons. It's always something that derails what otherwise was a promising effort. All right, uh, I, I look, I, positivity, Joe Mixon, five touchdowns. We talked about it earlier. We tried to get to some things maybe we didn't get to, but five touchdowns, one short of the all-time Record for Joe Mixon yesterday and a critical time for the Bengals. They didn't have a running game. It felt like they were kind of in disarray, but they get the win. They're five and four going into the bye week. Last year, going into the bye week, they were five and four. So they 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 know that. Mixon brought that up. They're exactly where they were last year. No Super Bowl hangover. We're exactly where we were, and they move forward into their bye, and they get the Steelers on Sunday night football subject to a flex coming up in 13 days. Yeah, that, that, that kind of should be subject to a flex, shouldn't it? I don't know if we really need to see this. Not our decision. Time very much we don't anymore. have any input in that. That's an NFL decision. Go ahead. Uh, I know, but I wish we had a little more influence. Okay, my second pick. I'm going to go with the Patriots, another team we kind of talked about earlier, but I was on the negative side. I'll be on the positive side this time, Mike. When you talk about the New England Patriots, they are now also 5-4. and four. And look, I mean, I think that they have a chance – to be competitive enough to get themselves into the postseason. Whenever you see Bill Belichick coach up uh, his defense against a young team and a young quarterback, right? This is the kind of stuff we eventually expect to see. They're going to demolish them. They're going to embarrass them. But when you hold a team to no conversions on third down in 14 tries, that is a banner day defensively, and they deserve a lot of credit for it. We talked a lot about Justin Fields. We didn't talk much about the Dolphins. I mentioned this guy a couple of times throughout the course of the show as it relates to MVP candidates. But Tyreek Hill, not just for yesterday, but the statement he's made all year long, and I probably had him in last week too, but he actually increased his pace. You know, we talk about, oh, someone's on pace for this. As of last week, he was on pace for 2,040 receiving yards. Now he's on pace for 2,085 after 143 yesterday. We just take it for granted. And this guy called his shot. I really do think deep down he saw what Cooper Cup was doing last year, and he said, I can do that, and he's doing it, and he's getting the chances to do it, and it is incredible. And the best news is he may generate enough receiving yards that the asterisk doesn't matter, that he will have on average over 17 the same average that Calvin Johnson had over 16. So no one can say, well, he had the extra game to do it. So I hope if he does break it, he breaks it by enough that per game, it's as many or more than Calvin Johnson. And he very well may do it, Miles. I mean, I I know we can talk about asterisk or whatever, but I think that, you know, as we sort of put it, you, you sort of put it last night, you know, you can no. put that asterisk you know, the where the che- Packers put with the, the cheese. cheese. Yes. You know? yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> Uh, last pick for me, I, I will go with Patrick Mahomes because they needed the Kansas City Chiefs him to step up in the way that he stepped up. And look, I know that everybody wants to talk about Josh Allen as the perennial MVP candidate, and he is, but so is Patrick Mahomes, man. And they, when they needed Patrick Mahomes to be that elite player that we know that he is, he stepped up. And he got it done. And man, I I like the way the Kansas City Chiefs are playing right now. And if this thing continues like it is, I mean, yeah, it looks like we're going into the uh, Mahomes and Allen again in the postseason. I I really like that. 
I'll go Robert Sala and the Jets because, look, we didn't mention him earlier. We talked about how Zach Wilson improved from last week to this week, but the coaching staff had a lot to do with that. The way they take the negatives coming out of the loss to the Patriots, turn it into a positive for this game, and somehow get that team in the mindset after having a very demoralizing loss to the Patriots to not think we have no chance against the Buffalo Bills, to rise to the occasion, to come together together, the, the running game is getting it done without Brees Hall, Michael Carter, James Robinson. It's amazing. we got to take a break. We'll wrap up this Monday edition of PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.